In the ever-changing world of aviation, manufacturers must continuously strive to create aircraft that act as a worthy upgrade, entry, or something else for customers. It's a high-pressure and high-stakes environment with no room for error. Throughout the years, manufacturers worldwide have locked horns, trying to find ways to take more market share away from each other, provide direct answers to emerging planes, and so much more. The Airbus A330neo and the Boeing 787 7 are equally intriguing stories that are worth exploring. The A330neo, the last part short for new engine option, is a twin aisle, wide body, solely designed to meet the needs of the ever-changing market, acting as another option to disrupt that very market and do so while being all on the cheap for the European plane maker. The A330neo as we know it comes in two variants, the A330-800 and the A330-900, with the respective variants replacing the existing A330CO very well, it must be said too. Thanks to the Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 engines and other improvements implemented over its previous version, the Airbus A330neo harbours fantastic efficiency and cements itself as a leading choice in the market. But why did Airbus move ahead with the launch for the a 330neo. Being a re-engined, it is not a clean sheet like the 787, which the A330neo is often pitted against. Several compelling factors, you could argue, spurred the development of the A330neo, but still I wanted to begin with the idea that many had, which was Airbus quickly finding itself in a bit of a tough spot, only offering the A350 for long-haul travel. But hang on, you might tell me I'm forgetting the A380, especially considering the time of the A380neo's launch, and you'd be correct, but the reality was that even at that point, the A380 was really struggling in the market. Airbus needed to find ways, therefore, to adapt and offer more alternatives in that sector, offering planes that were worthy of a purchase from some of their key customers. Despite being a fantastic aircraft to them, it really didn't only want to provide the A350, and you can understand as a manufacturer why that may be the case. Take a look directly at Boeing. Their 787 has absolutely enhanced their wide-body portfolio, but it doesn't act alone. The 777 series has been a long-standing presence in that wide-body long-haul market and soon to be the 777X2. The focus of an A330neo significantly heightened really thanks to Boeing's performance with that very Dreamliner and concerns by customers that Airbus did not have an effective competitor. At the end of the day, as a leading aircraft manufacturer, not only how I said at the beginning of the video, do you want to adequately compete with the same offering, say, being provided by another rival manufacturer, but you do want to be able to take market share away. While Boeing was removing the 767s, the 787 was emerging strongly, and Airbus just had the A350, harking back to what I discussed. The A330neo was an excellent way for Airbus to release something cheaper and quicker to develop, to give customers another alternative instead of jumping straight back to say Boeing when seeking fleet growth or replacement methods. It did make a lot of sense as well. However, there were definitely valid concerns since the launch of this aircraft, which has ultimately been a very slow seller and struggled to also attract interest. Maybe a lot less interest than Airbus may have initially predicted when moving forward with the plane. However, some analysts would argue to you that it isn't really a big problem, as at the end of the day, this wasn't, say, a completely clean sheet. If it was a clean sheet, you can make the assumption that it would have incurred very high costs, delays, and so much more that would have hurt the program if it was selling poorly like it is. In regards to interest and orders, it has since the launch lost out to the Boeing 787, which, despite its problems, if we're really just analysing how its recent years have been within the industry, it has seen many issues emerge, but remained robust with orders, whereas Airbus has struggled to find genuine buyers for the A330. Neo, especially the smallest A330-800 variant, which many may even forget exists. You see, for Airbus, now they have the situation that while the A330neo is nestled between two critical aircraft programs, they find customers either jumping towards the A321neo series with the, don't forget, LR and XLR present, or jumping upwards to the A350-900 on a much larger scale. With just over 100 A330neos in service across 20-plus operators, the aircraft's biggest operators include the likes of Delta, 
Tapir Portugal and Condor, to name a few. However, away from these companies of operational aircraft, the commitments are minimal, with the series really becoming increasingly popular for smaller and more niche-based airlines that may only have a handful of aircraft. The A330neo's future, therefore, in the aviation industry, appears to be a pretty curious case for many. Airlines will always look for new aircraft that can be an absolute guarantee, especially as they gear up for potential future growth and in recent years have emerged from the depths of the global pandemic. However, how many airlines do actually choose to head the way of the A330neo is another question that remains unanswered, and time will only tell whether or not, say, 10 years down the line, the A330neo will have progressed with significant commitments and deliveries. Some airlines favour the three available variants of the Boeing 787 series, that is your Dash 8, Dash 9, and Dash 10. This means when they are exploring a replacement for, let's say, their A330 aircraft, they may opt for the Dreamliner, because typically in a lot of cases, there's actually a high chance that they're already flying a variant of the Dreamliner for another reason. It does mean that they can just pick the variant of their choosing and continue with that fleet continuity effect that we're seeing so many airlines adopt. And yes, I am directly looking at Qantas, which recently went on a bit of a journey to try and replace its A330 COs that were beginning to show signs of age. Shock horror, but the airline opted for the 787 Dreamliner liner, as it already flies that variant for a very different purpose to the A330CO, but the addition of the 787s to replace this do mean they can continue with that fleet continuity I talk about. The A330neo though is far from a bad aircraft, and actually does offer a lot to customers that may want to select it. From its birth, it has cemented itself as a slow grower within the industry, but like I said, it is one that serves a purpose, and no doubt over time will continue accumulating orders. Airbus are no doubt thankful that the aircraft is not a clean sheet design. Yes, it still did have development costs and it still has much to prove in our industry, but had Airbus progressed with a clean sheet in this market and it had performed as poorly as this, well no doubt the program would have incurred significant losses, it must be said. That is going to conclude today's analysis on the Airbus A330neo. It is an aircraft that is often pitted against the 787, but are they two different aircraft or do you believe they are adequately comparable? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I do really appreciate your support. Take care. Please do also be safe and I'll see you next time for more analysis on the aviation industry. And flight, and we'll fly.